uh, going to get Mike Johnson here, it looks like here. Take me through the, your thinking at this moment. This obviously seemed, is this vindication for you? Mike Johnson is a godly man. He is a thoughtful man. He understands the complexities of, of policy decisions. I serve with Mike Johnson not on just one committee, but on two committees, Judiciary and House Armed Services, so he understands foreign policy and military policy. And he's been my seatmate in the Judiciary Committee for seven years, where I've seen how his tactical proficiency can really help us uproot some of the most weaponized and and really unfortunate features of the Biden government. I mean, there's going to be uh, key issues that he's going to have to confront that McCarthy had to confront of fund funding the government. Would you be okay if he has to pass a short-term spending bill in mid-November? Well, Mike Johnson just put out a plan to get rid of the French work week here in Washington and to go to Bayou work hours, uh, where we're here even on weekends, even late at night, passing our appropriations bills. Mike Johnson just moments ago put out his plan on government funding, and you didn't even see the word continuing resolution in that plan. We're going to fund this government. We're going to fund Israel. We're going to fund our troops and our border patrol. But we're not going to do it by mashing all of those issues together in one up or down vote. We're going to address them in single subject legislation. But he, if he's going to have to move on a short term spending bill, if he does, Will that be enough to oust him the way you ousted well, McCarthy? Well, these aren't short-term spending bills. Yeah, but he's going to have to. He's not going to have, by, by November 17th, if he's forced to move on a short-term spending bill to keep the government open, would you push to oust him? No, and, and I don't expect that that's where we're going. And he's put out a plan that's in direct contravention to that. What we're looking at with Mike Johnson is uh, a strategy to put pressure on the Senate to take up our bills. For example, we have over $3 billion in Iron Dome money in our state and foreign ops appropriations bill that we've passed, that the Senate could take up, could amend, could conference with us at any time. And that's a better way to do this than having continuing resolutions govern our country. So you don't think he's going to do a continuing resolution at all? Uh, he doesn't think he's going to do a continuing resolution based on the substance of the plan he put out. Uh, I wouldn't fault Speaker Johnson if we have to have some sort of bridge to those single subject bills, but that was never in the cards with Speaker McCarthy. Mac but, but, but that's what McCarthy exactly no, did. No, no. He had a bridge to try to do there's a big a, longer bill. There's a fundamental difference. Kevin McCarthy took six weeks off in August, which was the tell that he was never serious about single subject bills. It, w when you're behind schedule, you don't take a six week vacation unless your goal is to ultimately truncate the process and get to a continuing resolution. Mike Johnson's goal is to get to single subject spending bills. Kevin McCarthy never had that goal. He might have said so, but like many things with Kevin McCarthy, it lacked truthfulness and sincerity. But what if he's forced to agree to spending levels higher than, you know, say the Fiscal Responsibility Act spending levels? Would you, be, would you accept that under Speaker Johnson? Oh, look, I understand in divided government, we have to negotiate these things with Biden and with the Senate. I've always said that. The question is what platform to use for that negotiation. I don't think we should be governing by omnibus or continuing resolution. Some of my colleagues just wanted to negotiate the features of that. So I'm sure I won't get a spending level as low as I would probably like it in divided government, but I think we can have more efficacy out of our spending if we have programmatic analysis and review, and you only get that with an amendatory process on single subject bills, not one big up or down vote on funding the government. It just sounds like you're giving him a lot more leeway that you didn't give McCarthy. Uh, I trust Mike Johnson, and I know Mike Johnson wants to achieve the goals I wanted to achieve. I didn't trust Kevin McCarthy because he wanted to achieve the goals that K Street wanted to achieve. There's a lot of hand wringing and bedwetting among the lobbyists and the PAC bundlers because they do not have a Speaker of the House anymore that they own and control and can manipulate. Mike Johnson answers to God and the Constitution, and it's not a question of how much leeway to give him. It's accepting the realities of divided government, but we have to change the rules of the game. That's what Mike Johnson's going to do. He's going to really prioritize our single subject bills over whatever ornament one can hang on a continuing resolution. I think that's my Okay, if he, if he brings Ukraine aid to the floor, what would you do? Well, I was heartened that, that last night when uh, Mike Johnson gave his acceptance remarks, he talked about Israel, and we didn't hear so much about excessive involvement for the United States in figuring out who's going to run Crimea.